Good day and welcome to the channel. Here you'll find a little bit of everything, but today I'm testing out how well integrated graphics hold up to the super popular game Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy was released in February of 2023 and its sales have been through the roof. You may be interested in purchasing the game, but are wondering how well your system would perform without a dedicated GPU? Let's find out. Before we begin, I just want to clarify that I'm not a big frame rate snob. My opinion will largely be based on how well the game looks and feels while I play it, and not what FPS I'm able to maintain. For people that like the numbers though, I'll show those towards the end of the video. If you can, try and watch this video in 1080p resolution to really get a feel for how the game looked to me while I played it. Here are some basic specs of the system I'm running the game on. A Ryzen 9 6900HX mobile processor with 32GB of DDR5 RAM. 8GB of that RAM is dedicated for use as VRAM by the integrated Radeon 680M graphics. Keep in mind that integrated graphics performance varies across different CPUs, so you may not get quite the same results. This video is simply for reference. Rebellion. To start off, let's look at a cutscene. The cutscenes in Hogwarts Legacy are rendered with the game engine as they happen, not prepared in advance. As such, we get a good up-close look at the character models and can look at the objects in the background without too much action going on to distract us. As you can see, the cutscene plays quite smooth and the 3D models look really good for integrated graphics. The game renders shadows and the magic effects look good. You can tell when there is some fast moving action, such as when the combat against the troll here gets going, that the frame rate is likely on the low end, but it still feels good playing it. You don't really notice the slightly choppy movement during the battle too much, as you're looking at things like your health and the warning symbol above your head. Alright, now we'll look at how things go in an actual battle instead of just a cutscene. Again, everything is really smooth, all things considered. If you look closely at the main character model as he moves quickly, or the camera spins very fast, you do notice that the frame rate is likely low. Again though, it's not something that I noticed when I was actually playing, as there is so much going on, you're largely just focusing on the action. Okay, for the people that are interested in them, let's talk numbers. For those numbers to matter though, we first need to go over what settings I was running the game on. Instead of tweaking it too much, I went into the menu and used the game's own benchmark function to determine what would be appropriate, and then just applied those. The resolution was set to 1920 by 1080 but rendering resolution was only 59%, making it essentially a resolution of 1130 by 636 Individual graphic presets were set to low. However, AMD FSR2 upscaling was enabled, set to balanced, to make it look much prettier than it had any right to be at that resolution on a large monitor. If you look at the stats at the top right of the window, the first number shown is the frame rate. Even in the middle of this battle, with multiple opponents and spell effects, the FPS hovered around 40 frames per second. Overall, I'd rate this game very playable on integrated graphics. At least, the Radeon graphics I have with my Ryzen 6000 series CPU. Anyone with an older chipset may want to steer away from this title. However, having played through the entire game on this setup to the tune of 44 hours, I can confidently say that it works. Thanks very much for stopping by, and if you like the content, hit the subscribe button.